Hi everyone, welcome to Calendar Math with Ms. Udo. All right guys, let's begin. We are almost at the end of the month. Last month was April, next month will be June. So what month is it? That's right, it is the month of May. Do you know what today is? Hmm, let's think. We are almost at the end of our school week. We have one more day. And so what day is it? That's right, today is Thursday. Well, if today is Thursday, then what was yesterday? Did you say Wednesday? If you did, you're absolutely correct. Yesterday was Wednesday. Well, if today is Thursday and yesterday is Wednesday, what will tomorrow be? You guessed it, tomorrow will be Friday. Look at our calendar. It is filling up so fast. Remember, a calendar assigns one number to every day of the month. Let's count our numbers together so that we can figure out what day of the month we're in now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. What comes after 27? Hmm. Did you say 28? That's right, today is the 28th day of the month. Let's say our date together. Remember, when we say our date, we start with the day of the week, and then we say the month, the number date, and then the year. Today is Thursday, May 28th, 2020. Let's say it together one more time. Today is Thursday, May 28th, 2020. Great job. All right, littles, here's your problem. Today, we are representing and solving problems involving either addition or subtraction. Our problem says, Miss Udo needs gift bags for her candy shop. She has 19 orders that need to go in a bag. Miss Udo already has six bags. How many more bags does she need to buy? Well, we've been doing a problem that looks just like this all week long. Does anyone remember what we've had to do to solve the problem? That's right, we've had to do some subtraction. Does anyone remember what our first step was? Did you say lay out the 19 orders? If you did, you're absolutely correct. Well, all week we've talked about laying out our orders in groups of 10. Is there a group of 10 and 19? That's right, there's one group of 10 and 19. So here are my first 10. If I have one group of 10, how many extra pieces are in the number 19? That's right, the number 19 has nine ones or nine extra pieces. Great job, guys. So now that we've laid out all of the orders, how can we figure out how many bags I need to buy? Did you say go ahead and use the six bags? That's right. We're gonna go ahead and put the candy in the six bags we already have and count to see how many candies we have left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we can count together to figure out how many more candies need to go in bags. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I still have 13 orders I need to put in bags, which means I need to buy 13 more bags. Great job, littles. All right, middles, you're up next. Remember, all week we have been connecting multiplication 
in addition to the area formula. Here's our problem for today. It says, Mrs. Udo drew the model above of her living room. Find the area of the space. So here's the picture of my living room and we wanna know the area of the whole space. And this week we've talked about complex or composite figures and finding the area. Well, first, how do you find the area of a figure? Did you say multiply the length by width? You're absolutely correct. Well, what do we know about a composite figure? That's right, we've got to split it into pieces that we know how to work with. So let's split our figure into pieces and then find the area of each piece. Let's start with the living room. What is the area of the living room? Do you know what the dimensions are? When I say dimension, I mean what is the length and what is the width? Did you say that the length and width of the living room are nine inches and four inches? If you did, you're absolutely correct. And nine times four is 216. So we found the area of the living room. We next have to find the area of the sleeping section. How do I find the area of the sleeping section? That's right, I multiply the length times the width. And what is the length and the width of the sleeping section? Did you say eight inches times eight inches? If you did, you're absolutely correct. And eight times eight is, that's right, 64. I've got a question for you. If the length and the width are exactly the same, what do we know about that figure? That's right, we know that it is a square. Are we finished with our problem? No, we're not, because we have two different areas that now need to be put together in order to find the area of our composite figure. So let's add 216 plus 64 equals, do you have an answer yet? Did you say 280 square inches? If you did, you're absolutely correct. I hope you didn't forget your units. All right, senior scholars, you're up next. Remember, all week we've been solving division problems using a place value strategy. Today's problem is 656 divided by four. Let's set it up. Remember, when we use this strategy, we are developing partial quotients. Partial meaning individual pieces that we're gonna do what with? That's right, put them together. So when we look at the number four, we're trying to figure out how many times the number four will go into 656. But using this strategy, we're going to think about a number that we know that's nice and easy to work with. What is the first number that comes to your mind? Did you say 100? That's what I said, because I always know that when four is multiplied by 100, I'll get what? That's right, 400. So 656 minus 400 leaves me with 256. What am I gonna do with that 256? That's right, I'll bring it on up. What's our next step? Did you say divide four into 256? You're absolutely correct. But remember, when we're using our place value strategy, we're trying to think about numbers that go in clean. And so we want to find something that we can just do mentally, typically ending in a zero. Well, I know that four times two is eight. Can I use that? No, not quite. Four times three is 12, not quite. Four times four is 16. That doesn't look like my problem either. But four times five is 20. If I know that four times five is 20, that means that I also know that four times 50 is 200. So 256 minus 200 gives me, that's right, 56. So we're gonna use 56 as the next term in our problem. Again, we can follow that exact same process, looking for something that we know off the top of our heads, looking for nice pretty round numbers usually. 
well, I know what four times 10 is, and it's almost close to that answer right there. Four times 10 is 40. And when I subtract 40 from 56, I'm left with 16. Whew, this one's a lot longer than the ones we've done on the other days. Now, mind you, earlier in our problem, you could have used completely different terms and ended up with the exact same answer at the end. So we're left with 16. Now, 16 is a nice, pretty small team number. Do you know how many times four goes into 16? That's right, it goes in four times. And four times four is 16. And when we subtract out, we end up with zero. Because we have a zero here at the end, we know that we won't have a remainder. So remember guys, I told you, these are all partial quotients, which means we now have to put them together to get our answer. So 100 plus 50 plus 10 plus four equals 164. Great job, guys. So that means that 656 divided by 4 equals 164. Great work today, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into Calendar Math with Ms. Udo. I'll see you tomorrow for Challenge Day. Bye-bye.